This weekend, we are stopping to honor the teacher and 12 students killed 20 years ago in the shooting at Columbine High School. It was a day that touched us all and showed us how strong of a community we live in. The students in the school that day, they're all now in their 30s. Many have families of their own. And I recently sat down with one survivor, Casey Rugsager Johnson. She was shot in the shoulder while in the library. And after a long road back herself, she's now advocating for others who find themselves in the middle of horrific tragedies. So first, welcome back to Colorado. Although you're back for the memorial events, how's it feel to be back here? It's nice to be back to remember with everybody and get to be a part of the special weekend and events going on to remember Columbine. And you say that in such a positive way, yet you have, I mean, a story that details in your book of how you were, how you were injured. Um, you said it's taken you a, a, a long road to get here. It's been a long road, a long journey. And what does that mean? It's been hard. It's been scary. It, the event completely changed my life in every way. Um, I have a new disability that I live with. My mind was broken for a long time. And it took probably 13 to 15 years for me to reclaim my life from the grip that fear had on it. And, and talk to us about how that, that was. I mean, what did, what did you deal with? What are you comfortable talking about, I guess I should ask? I dealt with a lot of PTSD. Um, fear of being in public, fear of loud noises, fear of people with bulky backpacks or coats on, um, things that don't even make sense to people who haven't experienced something like Columbine. Hmm. Um, a lot of anxiety about having kids, sending my kids to school. But there came a point where I just didn't want to let those things have control over my life anymore. And what did that for you? What changed for you? I don't know if there was an exact moment, but around the 13 to 15 year mark, um, I realized that I was giving so much power to the shooters, even still 15 years after the event, that they still had a hold on my mind and a hold on my heart, and I didn't like that I was giving that to them. And I wanted my life back, and I wanted to choose how these things that had happened to me were going to impact my life going forward. Hmm. And you spent a lot of time um, speaking in front of people now, something you never thought you would do. <laughs> uh, but part of your story is telling people about your shoulder. Actually, let's start by explaining how you were injured. So I was in the library during the shooting, and one of the shooters knelt down about six feet behind me and pointed a shotgun at me. And the slug from the shotgun was going for my head, but I was shrugging my shoulders because he was so close and it hit the back of my shoulder, came out the front, through my right hand and across my neck. And the impact shattered the bones in my shoulder and hand. And so much of what you talk about is in your book is the doctors who helped reconstruct your, your, your shoulder and tissue donation. So doctors used an allograft to put my arm back together and that is a donated cadaver bone something that we had never heard of at the time, didn't even know that was possible. And it's given me a chance, two things. One, to carry on the story of somebody else, which is such an honor to carry that mm. gift with me every day. But the life that the gift provided to me, to have two arms to wrap around my babies, to hold their hands, um, and to hug the people I love has been really special. What do you tell your kids about your Columbine experience, or do you? We talk very carefully about my experiences with our kids. We want to make it age appropriate, but never lie, mm. but package it in a way that they know good things can come out of difficult circumstances. And what do you want people to know? You've written this book. You said it took how many years to four and a half put years this together? <laughs> what do you want people to know from this book? I think the point in sharing my story was to give others encouragement and hope that they too can own their stories and their difficult moments and turn them around into positives for their life and that it's hard to do and sometimes the journey is very long but it's very worth it to find freedom in healing and freedom in choosing how we want our stories to impact our lives going forward. Well Casey Johnson thank you so much thank you for your honesty and being yeah. here with us I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. 
and you can meet Casey and learn more about her book, Over My Shoulder, tomorrow at the market in Larimer Square. She'll be there from 1030 till 1230. Thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics Unplugged.